Welcome to another new chapter of financial modeling. In this video, we are going to learn how to account for depreciation by using Microsoft Excel. We know that according to international accounting standards as well as LKSs, we are going to use property plan 10 equipment standard for depreciation, which is LKS 16. According to that, the depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. Excel offers eight different built-in depreciation functions, such as straight line method, sum of years digits method, declining balance method, double declining balance, accelerated method, variable declining method, as well as unit of production method. Now let's see the structure of the depreciation table. Here we are starting with the number of years or the useful life. Then first we have this column called cost to include the original cost. Then the current year's depreciation included in the third column by under the depreciation. Then we are going to take the total, which is the accumulated depreciation. And finally, we are going to put the net book value of the particular asset. First, we are moving to the straight line method. Here, the same amount of depreciation is deducted from the value of an asset for every year of its useful life. The formula to calculate the annual depreciation using the straight line method is from the cost, we are going to deduct the salvage value and then we are going to divide it by the useful life. Now, let's see. Excel offers you SLN function for that. The syntax for SLN function is, first we have to put the cost, then the salvage value and life. Let's see, the cost means the initial cost of the asset. It can be the purchase by plus installation fees plus, then the other cost relating to the asset according to the standard. Then we have to put the salvage value. Salvage is the value at the end of the depreciation. Then we have to put the life. Life is the number of periods over which the asset is depreciated. It is the useful life of the asset. Next, we are moving to the sum of years method. So in the sum of years digit method, we use the expected life and we are going to add the digits for every year to give the final depreciation expense amount. In the SYD method is an accelerated depreciation method. Why? In this method, the assets are depreciated at a higher rate in the early years. Let's see the syntax for sum of years digit method. Here we are going to put the cost, salvage value and life as same as the SLN method. Then we are going to incorporate per. The per means the period and it must be used the same units as the life. Then we are going to move into the declining balance method. It is also called the reducing balance method. In the declining balance, assets are depreciated at a higher rate in the initial years than the subsequent years. In this method, a constant depreciation rate is applied to an asset over the book value each year. Let's see the formula for declining balance. That is cost minus salvage value then the life, 
Here we have incorporated the period as well as the particular month. This month is optional. It includes the number of months in the first year. If the month is omitted, it is assumed to be 12. Other things are same. Then we are moving to the double declining balance. The straight line depreciation rate is applied but two times to the carrying cost of the asset or the net book value under the double declining balance method. So here we are going to depreciate it two times. The double declining balance method record larger depreciation expenses during the earlier years of an asset useful life and smaller ones in the latter periods. It is ideal for assets that quickly loses its value or are subject to technological obsolescence. So you can see the formula to use the double declining balance. That is twice of the asset at cost minus accumulated depreciation and we are going to divide it by the useful life of the asset. Same as the sum of the straight line method value, but here we are going to multiply it by 12. Then let's see this exercise. So here the ABC company is recently acquired a machine, right? So this machine is depreciated in different, different methods. So we have to prepare the depreciation table according to this. So now you can see I have put it in the, right? I have put two examples for this. Now in the example one, the ABC company recently acquired this machine. So here the cost is 850000 And this machine has the useful life of four years. And the salvage value is 50000 So now we have to develop a model to calculate the annual depreciation. So you can see the depreciation table. So now we have to substitute the values. Firstly, we are going to find the sum of years digits method. According to this method, first we have to put the cost. The cost is the cost of the asset. So we have to give the cell reference for that particular cell. Since this cost is fixed for this asset, what we are going to do, we are going to put the absolute cell reference. We can do it by Pressing the F4 key easily. Then we have to enter the depreciation. Here we have to use S by D formula, which indicate the sum of years digit. So here, first we have to put the cost. So we have to give the cell reference of that particular cell. And since this is constant over the period of time, we have to fix it. Then the salvage value. So we have to give the cell reference and we have to fix it. Why? Because it is fixed over the period of time. Then the life. So we have to give the cell reference for the useful life. Then we have to fix it. Why? Because the life is fixed for this asset. Then finally, what we have to enter is we have to enter the per. Per means the current period. So you can see we have fixed or we have absolute the cost, salvage and life. However, we are keeping the per as the relative reference, which means when the period is changing, this cell will automatically change it. Then the accumulated depreciation. In the first year, accumulated depreciation only indicate the depreciation of the current period. 
then the net book value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So you can wrap this cost and depreciation value easily. So for that, you can use the auto filtering option. In my loan amortization, I have explained you how to use this auto filling option, right? So now what we are going to do, we are going to put the accumulated depreciation in the second year. That is first year plus the second year. For that, what we can do easily, we can take the first year accumulated depreciation, then we are going to add the second year's depreciation. So when you drag it down, you can see based on the autofilling formula, the depreciation year by year, it's adding together. Then we are going to find the net value. Net value, we have used the cost minus accumulated depreciation. Now by using the autofilling option, I'm going to drag it down. So you can see according to the sum of years digit method, we have 50,000 at the end of the fourth year. Now let's move on to the straight line method. Here also the cost figure is fixed. So we have to give the cell reference of cost and we have to fix it by using the F4 key. Then the depreciation. Here for the depreciation, we have to use SLN function. So according to that, first we are going to refer the cost. Since it is fixed, we are going to use the F4 key. Then the salvage value. We are going to fix it as well because it is constant over the period of time. Then we are going to use the useful life. Since it is fixed for the period, we are going to use the absolute cell reference. So now we are going to use the accumulated depreciation. As I mentioned you earlier, the accumulated depreciation of the first year is the depreciation of that year only. Then the net book value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So now we can drag this cost and depreciation. At the same time, you can see the cost is same. In the straight line method, since we are going to deduct the equal portion, this depreciation amount is same. Then the accumulated depreciation. The accumulated depreciation include the previous year's depreciation plus the current year's depreciation. So you can drag it down. And the net book value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So we can drag it as well. Now you can see at the end of the year, what is remaining is just the salvage value, which is 50,000. Now I'm going to use the freeze panel option. So I can freeze this. Now I'm going to move it so I can easily apply it to the declining balance. In the declining balance, still the cost is same. Cost is the cost of the asset. So we are going to fix it. Then the depreciation, we have to use 
by using this DB formula. DB indicates the declining balance. So first we have to put the cost. Since this is fixed for the asset, we are going to fix it. Then the salvage value. Then the life. But here in the period, what we are going to use is the current period. So if we don't have anything for month, they will automatically take it as 12. But since we don't know, we can skip it as well. We can omit it. So when you omit it, there is nothing here. Right? So here, what can we use? We can put something here. So I'll put first. So it is the first month. Now the accumulated depreciation. So the accumulated depreciation is the current year's depreciation for the first period. Now the net value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So I want to show you when I change this figure into 12, see what is happening. So you can see the values are changing. Earlier one means the first month. 12 means at the end of the 12 months, how much we have charged as the depreciation. So it's better you are keeping 12 there. So the next year, the cost and depreciation component, we are going to put the auto filling option for that. Then the accumulated depreciation is the previous year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year's depreciation. So then you can drag it down by using the auto filling option. Then the net value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So we can use the same formula to the rest of the period. So you can see there's a small proportional change in the final value. Because here we have applied a particular percentage. Then I am in the final one of double declining balance. Here also we have to refer the cost. Since it is fixed, I'm going to fix it. The cells by using the absolute cell reference. Then for the depreciation, we have to use DDB formula. That is a double declining balance. So by using these names, you can easily get the notations. So here, first we have to refer the cost. We have to fix it. Then the salvage value, we have to fix it. The life, we have to fix it. Then the period, the current period. So here, we can put a factor. So we can multiply it by 2, 3, likewise we can do anything. So I'm going to use the factor as 2. Twice it's going to depreciate. So if you put 3, it's going to depreciate thrice, likewise. So the accumulated depreciation is the current year's depreciation in the first period. Then the net book value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So here, I'm going to take this cost and depreciation. I'm going to highlight them. Then I'm going to drag it down till end. Then accumulated depreciation is the previous year's depreciation plus the current year's depreciation. Then I'm going to drag it down to fill it automatically in the rest of the cells. The net back value, as I mentioned you earlier, it is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. 
So here I'm going to drag it down so you can see at the end of the period, there is a small percentage or small value higher than the salvage value. So this is how you are going to do the depreciation calculation based on four separate methods. Now let's move on to the 